Welcome back guys to the uh, newest series on this channel which is our Visual C Sharp tutorial series. So last episode we made um, this cookie clicker clone. So this episode we'll be going, we'll be diving deep into the three structures of programming. Exciting! So let's get started. So I'm going to create a new project and it's just, I'm going to call this hexgen. Oh fancy, this is, this is something we haven't done. So uh, Okay, so this project is going to be a hexadecimal uh, color generator. So let's say you want to generate five random colors, this will let you. So uh, let's just add a label. This will be like our title. Then we want a list view object. So this will actually store our different colors. Now we're using this object as we can generate a, let's say just create an item and to call this one, I can actually set the background colour to be a different colour, so if I just go red of item one, so you can set the text to say text, and as you can see that's our first item, and we can set a custom colour, so that's what we want, we want to be able to have custom background colours for each item, hence why we're using a list view item. You can use the um, list box, but you have to purposely write code to draw the spe uh, separate colour, which is too convoluted, so it's just easier to do it this way. So in this, we want to make this as big as possible, just do that, and now we need a number, we need a number that we can change. So a numeric up and down, so this just lets us change a number, and again let's have have a label, and let's name, name this um, amount of colours, and let's label, label these, so amount of colours, and this is our list for you, and finally we need a button. And this is just the button that we click when we want to generate. So there we are. So when we click this button, we need to uh, first take this amount. We need to then loop through this. Okay, so let's discuss the three different types of um, constructs in computer science. So we have sequence, selection, and iteration. So sequence is when one... Uh, one command is sent after another, so one, two, three, four. Selection is if this, then do that. So it's an if statement, basically. And iteration is just when you loop something, so it's like a for loop or a while loop. So in our function, what we need is we need to first clear box. So we clear it. We then we then need to declare a random object, so that this item will just be random. Then we need to go an if statement, so a selection statement that says if the number is bigger than zero. And inside of here, if it is, then we want to do our for loop. So we need to generate random colors, set string, add to box. But if it isn't bigger than zero, so if it is zero, we want to show a show a message box. Let's write this. So we want our list box. So we want our list box, which is this one, which is our list view, list view dot items dot clear. Let's get rid of everything. So get rid of everything. So let's comment this, clear the box. Then we want to uh, declare our random, and let's go random rnd equals new random. Next we need to do our if statement, so if it should run. So if our amount of colors dot value is bigger than zero, then we can do everything. If not, then message box dot show, um, and we want to say not well wrong value. 
we can put a caption that says error. So that will be fine. So if it should run, so if the amount of colors value is bigger than zero, we need a for loop for as many colors as we have. So for an integer x, so we could declare a variable within this loop and it starts off as zero, x is less than amount of colors dot value. So we get the value and x will always be less than that during the loop and x plus plus. So every single time we add one to x. So what this is doing is it's declaring a inline variable, which is called x. If x is lower than um, lower than our value, it's going to run this code once and then it's going to add one. So every for every value, it's going to, uh, going to run this code. We create an inline integer called red and we go rnd, so our random next and we get the random color 0256. And as it says here, as it very kindly says, the exclusive upper bound of the random number returned, meaning that it will never return 256 since it's an upper bound and it's exclusive. If it was inclusive, it would include it. So green, blue. Then we want to create a string and this is our output string. So here we need to go red to string, but that will just output a number because obviously this is a number. So if we put inside of here x2, this says hexadecimal and it's always a two digit number. So plus green do exactly the same thing, plus blue do exactly the same thing. We get our list list view dot items dot add and we want to add our output string here. We need to now we'll set the colour. So we go list view dot items and we want to go to the index and it's x because this is zero based. This is why we start at zero up here and not one. We want to get x. So all arrays in C sharp start at zero, not one. So we've just created an item and this is our item zero. So the first item, we take that index and go back color equals color from ARGB. And then we can just use the colors, so red, green, blue. So we've gone through the structure of coding here. So we have a few sequences. We do this, do this, that's a sequence. Selection, so we do this, otherwise we do this. And iteration, we do a loop. So now if we run this, uh, let's just generate 17 random colors. So as you can see, 17 random colors. Take a screenshot, put it into Photoshop. Do a random, do our color picker. Is this 244, 244F73? That looks correct to me. CC2, that's correct. Just need to make the items bigger. So let's remove our test items now. Let's try setting it to tile. Let's just see what that looks like. That's a bit better. So this may seem less complex than our previous project, but we've gone through and we've used our three constructs in computer science. So that's why this video is in this order. So finally, let's just do what we always do, make it look pretty and stuff. So this, what we can do is we can anchor to the top right like that. So if we if we increase the size of the window now, you see it always moves a bit like that. Next, this needs to be docked at the bottom. If we start this, you can see the height shouldn't doesn't change, but it's now docked to the bottom and the width. So what we can do here is rather than docking it like I was, let's do that. And let's go a split container, split container. Horizontal split container. If we just drag this into a split container here, 
and then drag this into a split container. We can dock this. So dock to the center. We want to dock the split container to the center. Then put our stuff back where it should be. This will then be docked within the split container. Finally, the heading, the panel one. So if we go split container, panel one. So up here, we need to select our split container one. You see panel one collapsed equals false. Minimum size is going to be, let's say, 40. Panel two, that. And then finally, we want 40 as the splitter dif difference here. So now, this will always be the right size here. And then we can just set our minimum, set our minimum width here. So minimum size, 640 by 480. So you can't get any smaller than this. But this can be as big as possible. Generate some random colors, and there we are. So although it seems like a simpler project than the last one, we have just gone through some basic computer science uh, constructs. So please like and comment, all that lovely stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.